All right, we are back in the classroom after all of these years. We're gonna talk about some primers. Some of you guys wanna know about some primers. I'm just gonna talk about the ones that I've actually used. Um, the other ones, she talked to somebody else about, but these are the ones that we actually use at the shop. Um, we very actually rarely use an epoxy primer because we're more of a collision shop than a restoration shop. So, what, you, what we have is a self-etch primer. You can get this in a 2K. 2K two parts would be with a uh, hardener. Or you can get it in a rattle can, which would be a 1K. Uh, you always want to top coat this with something. So you would top coat it with a urethane primer. That's the normal primers that you would use. You can get that in a 1K or a 2K as well. kind of hard to write, oh, weird like this, okay. So, 1K being a rattle can, or sometimes they do sell a can that doesn't have a hardener. 2K, you always want to do 2K, and you always want to spray it out of a spray gun. The rattle can's garbage, um, because, you know, especially for the urethane primer, because you want some kind of buildup, and the rattle can primer does not give you that much buildup. As far as I'm concerned, they're horrible. You might as well just go out and spend the 25, 30 bucks for a, a two-part urethane primer that actually comes with a hardener. You're gonna love it a lot more, especially if you're not that great with bodywork. Um, like I was saying before, any kind of imperfections that you have, you need to keep working your filler until you can't really feel nothing, and then you could put your self-etch primer around the bare metal and then you can put your urethane primer filler um, on top of that. Now, with the self-etch primer, for example, I'll give you the whole little rundown here. Let's just say that's your body filler that you work down and it's good. Okay, and then uh, let's say you're, you sanded back right here. So let's just say this is paint. This is all your paint right here right up to that line and then you got bare metal right here this is all bare metal nice and scratched up from me working this filler down right here so the etch primer you would put all in the bare metal you don't want to just come all the way across and go over your body filler because etch primer is made for metal um, it's not made to totally coat over uh, body filler. You're going to get some problems there. So you just want to spray, of course you're going to get over spray you know on the paint and the, the body filler but you just don't want to you know just smash it on just start coating all crazy. So you do you know kind of a light coat of that. You could do a medium coat um, meaning that you don't have to completely drown this thing in etch primer. You just want to do a one coat deal and then you're ready for your urethane primer, you know, what you're used to, the primer filler. Um, and then you take your urethane primer and you actually coat all of this stuff to there with your urethane primer. So your etch is on the bare metal, urethane primer, that's what's going to help you uh, come out with your finished product that you can paint over. And all of your painted surface should be scuffed or sanded with uh, five or 600 grit, you know, out to this area, past where your primer is going to be. Um, that way it's, you know, your primer is actually adhering to something. You never want to prime over shiny paint. It's not going to stick. And you're going to have a hell of a time trying to feather it out when you're block sanding. Okay, so then after you've primed it and it's sat, you know, you're doing what? You could do two, three coats of the urethane primer. And uh, you kind of want to build it up each time. And when you're priming with urethane primer, um, 
there's a kind of discrepancy about this. Some people believe that you should do a coat over your filler first and then work your way out on the second coat. And then on the third coat, that's when you come all the way out. Well, some people also believe that the better way is to do your entire coat first, right? And then work your way in. And the second coat a little tighter, and then the third coat just right down there in the center. Most people that I hear, you know, that's the way they do it. That's the way we do it at work. Now, an epoxy primer, um, you know, that's a 2K. Uh, that's the closest thing to an E-coat. The E-coat is the best you can have. This is factory coating. That's the factory black coating that comes on parts like Toyota or Honda. So if there's no body work to be done, all you have to do is scuff this E-coat with, you know, like a red scuff pad, and then you can actually seal it and paint it. So there's no priming necessary because this E-coat is the best you can have. It's even better than epoxy primer. If you're gonna restore something, epoxy primer is the best way to go. If you're going down to bare metal, you know, you want something really good to protect against rust and any kind of uh, moisture getting in there, this is your best bet. That's what you want, some epoxy primer. Um, I hope this answered some of your questions. Uh, of course, you know, I can't talk about every single primer out there. This video would probably be two hours long. But um, with what I've showed you right here, you know, this this will be enough um, to what most people are using. You know, the other stuff isn't really used. So you can get all of these, well, except for this one. You can't get this one from a, from a uh, paint supply store. But all these other ones you can get from a paint supply store or online. Uh, make sure you know the ratios of each one. They should show them on the can or you can ask the guys at the paint supply store how to mix them and they'll actually show you how to mix them. They want to sell you their products so they're going to show you how to use it. Uh, you can also ask them you know what's the better brands and stuff like that. I don't want to put brands on you guys because sometimes you can't get those certain brands. It just depends on what area you're in and the supply store usually knows you know what products have worked the best and they're not going to most of them aren't going to sell you some crap that's just been sitting around you know if they really want to help you out um, if you're going online you know you could just put these into little search areas and figure out you know which ones you would want but um anyway hope this helped and uh we'll see you guys next time